All right, this is a uh, slam dance film, and it's called Future 38, or should I say it more, more grand? Future 38. Can you do more grand than that? I, I could try. <laughs> okay. By the end of the interview, I will. Future 38. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the director is here. Uh, he is uh, Jamie uh, Greenberg, a dr- director and screenwriter. So it, I'm just, uh, I didn't get it. I don't get it. Kerry thinks he's got it. <laughs> 1938 Help screwball. Us out, 1938 screwball comedy set in the far off future year of 2018. And I just went, well, I'm, I don't know. What's I'm it? betting that Jamie found this film hidden away somewhere, and it was, it was never put out on the screen. It was shot back in 1938. You are correct. About the futuristic <laughs> time. Oh. Our time, 2018. Yeah, the, our film actually begins with Neil deGrasse Tyson himself <laughs> in the modern day, mm-hmm. explaining that uh, he's not only a famous astrophysicist, he's also a film buff. And he, today he'd like to show us a film from 1938, one of the early Technicolor films, mm-hmm. uh, a film that's be, that, that has been locked away in a Hollywood attic for you know eight decades, yes. recently uncovered. And the fun thing about this movie is that it uh, is a time travel film. So these 1938 filmmakers ah. decided to make a okay. movie about the impossibly distant future year of 2018. So what did 1938 filmmakers think our modern era might be like? And that's well, how I the bet film we unfolds. we have our jetpacks, for one thing. We don't have jetpacks, oh. as a matter of fact. Oh. But oh. if you would like to budget my next film, okay. I can promise you jetpacks. How about that? Yeah, right. so, so how do you make the future look... Well, I mean, I, you, you've got a 1938 mindset, so... That, that sort of becomes the fun of the film. As yeah. the film goes on, it's a mix. The, the joke is sort of that these old-time filmmakers got a lot wrong and a lot right and it enabled me to make a future film in our modern world so it's modern day televisions and modern iPhones and modern cars and the subtext of the film if I can be as much of an English major as to use the term subtext (laughs) please do guys yes we got it okay the subtext sort of is that we are living in the future now and let's take a look at the world we live in now it's so incredible Ah. I like the future I'm in it (laughs) we're all in it exactly right and so I put a a 30s gloss on our modern world so for example to make a phone call you pull out a sleek modern little iPhone right press the button and up comes Mabel, the operator. Uh, Good afternoon, oh. Mr. Greenberg. What extension, please? <laughs> In Briarcliff 42110. That kind of thing. And throughout the movie, we see these things that are, uh, each one is a fun mix of a 1930s sensibility mm-hmm. and a modern sensibility. Uh, and I should also say that most of the movie is in Technicolor, beautiful, vivid 1930s style Technicolor. It's why I'm wearing this purple yeah, suit. I was going to say you, uh, your suit is very vivid. Yeah, Technicolor. I've been I've been rocking a variety of very bright colored suits to be sort of a human billboard mm-hmm. for this movie. It works. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, a lot of people don't if, if they don't think about it, they sort of they remember that the Wizard of Oz, of course, is in color, and right. they sort of know that it's from the 30s. Mm-hmm. But they also forget that Technicolor really w- existed in the 30s, even earlier than that, even 34, 35. Mm-hmm. And so, our movie is kind of a Valentine to that look. Do you, did you shoot it on film? No, no, we shot it on the red. Mm-hmm. You know, cutting edge, mm-hmm. the Red Dragon camera. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful, yeah. high def video camera. And uh, it's real, is it real saturated and? Very, Quite very, cool. very saturated. Mm-hmm. I have to tip the hat to both uh, Alan McIntyre Smith, our director of photography, and to the folks at our post production uh, facility because uh, we put lots and lots of work into making this video look like that saturated old 1930s yeah. candy color mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we associate with The Wizard of Oz in particular. Mm-hmm. The movie starts in black and white. At the, it, it's, As um, The Wizard of Oz did. Yeah. Exactly right, of course. It, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's a tip of the hat to, to mm-hmm. what they did. And in 1938, our handsome hero, Essex, who's played by Nick Westrate, is called into the office of the top general of the military and told that, you know, it, it's 1938, which in real life was the eve of World War II. It was the year mm-hmm. before World War II began. <laughs> Uh, war clouds were on the horizon, of course, and so Essex has a mission to stave off this impending war, but it involves traveling 80 years into the future. <laughs> and so for that first scene, it's in beautiful old monochrome, beautiful old black and white. Mm-hmm. And then after he's transported to the year um, uh, 2018, to the future, our present, mm-hmm. everything is in these gorgeous, saturated, 
primary colors. I like it. Yeah. It's Future 38, and, and it's basically a comedy. We should also... It's a screwball comedy. Point that out. <laughs> so so it's there's all kinds of wacky hype. Very here. much in the spirit of bringing up Baby, yeah. uh, His Girl Friday, that, that kind of thing. There's a, there's a certain amount. There's snappy dialogue and a certain amount of slapstick. There is. There's exactly right. It's all written in that in that 1930s, 1940s kind Overlapping of pattern. Overlapping di- dialogue. That's right. Yeah. And a tribute again. Our two act, our two lead actors, Betty Gilpin and Nick Westrait, just own that style. They, they just the, they ran that, with it. They get that rapid delivery. That they say, hey, you. What are you doing? So here? rapid. <laughs> the lines are tumbling on top of each other, and it oh. makes it a challenge in edit, although a, a fun challenge, mm-hmm. because you never really have a line that's clean, because yeah. the lines are all just a little bit tumbling on top of each other. Oh, that's great. And they, I, you know, they. Of course, the two of them have a romance. Do and they use the vernacular too? Uh, yeah, old I, vernacular. That was the the most fun part. At, wearing my screenwriter hat, I had the most fun researching all that snappy old patter. I made up some. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and, and there we are. And so you end up with a movie set in visibly our modern world, but everybody acts like it's 1938. I like it. Yeah. And so it's a funny mix of two different worlds. It's a, it must, must have been really fun and challenging to do. Uh, have you shown it to a slam dance audience yet? No, no, the world premiere is tomorrow Tuesday. night. Yeah. Wow. Tomorrow it, show, night it plays night. tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. at Slam Dance. That's the first time any public audience will ever be seeing it. Really? Then we have a second screening, same place, Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really excited and really nervous because I've really never seen any, any strangers watch the movie. I hope it's a great success. And, and then I hope we get a, if we don't make this, I hope people will get a chance to see it on a wider basis. That would be a great thrill for you, I know. It certainly would. Yeah, I hope so, too. Future 38 is the name of the movie. It's called, uh, that's the name of it. It's uh, directed and written by Jamie Greenberg. Uh, And if you're around Park City, he's the one wearing the vividly bright colored suits. (laughs) That's me. Uh, Under all of his parkas and stuff, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks a lot for being with us. Hey, thanks, guys. Future 38. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks.